Hey folks, Craig here, and today I'm going to be sharing with you my Game Boy collection. This is the original black and white Game Boy, so not Game Boy Color, not Game Boy Advance, just old school Game Boy. And I have here 29 games, uh, which is to say, you know, not a complete collection, not even really meant to be all that impressive, certainly not flexing here, um, just the box games that I own and enjoy in my collection. And I'll talk a little bit more about my Game Boy collecting at the end of the video, but until then, I'll start here with, um, I go in every Nintendo handheld boxed and complete, and this is the original Game Boy, which of course came with Tetris. So this is my boxed copy of Tetris, <laughs> I guess you could say. Bart Simpson's Escape from Camp Deadly. This was, uh, in addition to Tetris, of course, the first Game Boy game that I ever owned. So the first, you know, individually boxed Game Boy game. And it is, you know, by no means a, a perfect game, but I really enjoyed it as a kid. The Simpsons theme song plays constantly throughout the entire thing, so uh, that certainly got stuck in my head as a kid. Uh, pretty challenging as a child, but I enjoyed it. I especially like this box art. Baseball, uh, another one of my uh, first games. My grandparents got this for me um, for Christmas. The same Christmas I got the the Game Boy, and um, yeah, found it challenging to make heads or tails of. I mean, I knew how to play baseball. I played played Little League, but like playing it as like a video game was, you know, obviously a bit, a bit more, a bit of a different experience. But a nice game to have in the Game Boy collection. We have your Bomberman. And, you know, I bought this uh, on a trip to Japan once just because the novelty of this is just absolutely wild, right? Like, this is like a Band-Aid container. Just Bomberman inside this, but, you know, there it is. I thought that was really cool. It was only a few bucks. At, I think it was Super Potato. So, I had to get that. Donkey Kong, otherwise known as Donkey Kong 94 uh, for the release year. What a phenomenal game. So many, there's like 80 something levels to this game. Uh, just felt endless as a kid. And it, and it really felt like a, an accomplishment when, when, when I was, I don't know, 11 or 12 when I finished this. Fantastic game. Hankyo Alien. Uh, this is the Japanese version because the American version was well, a little too rich for my blood. Um, but this is a really fun arcade style game where uh, aliens are invading during the Han period in Japan and you play as like a, a police officer and you have to dig holes <laughs> for them to get trapped in. So they follow you around this maze, I don't know, Pac-Man-ish maybe, and you dig these holes and uh, when they fall in the hole you have to bury them. <laughs> that's, that's the whole game. And it has brilliant music, it's, it's uh, a real asset to the Game Boy Library. James Bond 007 um, with, with this classic holographic new release sticker from back in the day. Um, this was this was really cool. Uh, this is a completely original James Bond game on the Game Boy. It it looks and sort of plays a bit like Zelda. You have sort of these dungeony environments and different things you can equip. Um, a really cool, unique experience on the Game Boy. Final Fantasy Legend 3. Um, I've, I've played all the Legends. Um, I borrowed them from friends when I was a kid. This this was the one that I got for Christmas back in like the early 90s. This is the first JRPG that I can remember playing and certainly the first JRPG I ever finished by myself, which again, like, like Donkey Kong, I guess, felt like a very big accomplishment. Um, just, uh, you know, for me, for me personally, personally, in my own personal video game history, uh, just a, a, a milestone game, right? Like just really changed what games felt like to me and obviously started down, started me down the path of really enjoying JRPGs. Um, amazing game. And of course you can play all the Legend games on the Switch. There's a collection of them. Ghostbusters 2. And this is, I, I love these Japanese, these tiny Japanese boxes. They're so compact and cute. Um, this was developed by Howl, actually, which is really cool. And um, this is a top-down, you know, cute Ghostbusters game. Really nice, and a shame we never got it here in North America. For the Frog the Bell Tolls, which is sort of like an action-adventure game, action RPG, 
uh, in many ways the predecessor to Link's Awakening actually. Um, I don't know how true it is, it's said that Link's Awakening runs on a modified version of this game's engine, which, you know, if you look at it, you can certainly believe that. And one of the main characters here, Richard, is also makes an appearance in Link's Awakening. He's the one you need to find the golden leaves for. So, nice release on the Game Boy. Kid Icarus of Myths and Monsters. Um, I really liked this a lot as a kid. And this is a lot better than the NES version. Um, it's still, I don't, as an adult, I'm like, eh, it's okay. Um, the NES version was a lot more punishing. There are these vertically scrolling levels. I don't think either one of these are the, those levels, but there's these sort of levels that you work your way up rather than across. And on the NES version, um, wherever the screen stopped as you're going up, like that was the bottom. If you fell down past that, you died. And that's not the case in the Game Boy version. You can continue to scroll back down, uh, which is nice. Um, but, you know, a, a release I enjoyed quite a lot as a kid, even if it's not necessarily something I enjoy that much now. Kirby's Dream Land. This is the very first Kirby game. And as you can see here in North America, they're like, Ugh, we're not going to make him pink. Um, Kirby's always been pink in Japan, but here in his very first game in North America, they made him ghost white. Um, a very simple, short, brief game, like most Kirby games, actually, but uh, still very enjoyable. Stone Cold Classic. God, the nostalgia just looking at this box. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Um, I got this for my birthdays, uh, the, uh, the year it came out. And God, just so entranced. A completely magical experience. Of course, only Link's Awakening DX, but that's, that's in the Game Boy Color video. But um, this, amazing stuff. Mercenary Force, which is um, kind of like a shoot 'em up, like a scrolling shoot 'em up, but you're you're you you're you don't have like a ship. You actually have several different like mercenary units, and they all attack. They all shoot like shurikens or whatever. They all attack in different ways, and you can change your formation of how they're lined up as you scroll through like town or whatever. Uh, a really unique idea, and if you like shoot 'em ups, uh, worth checking out. Metroid 2, Return of Samus, fantastic box art. Man, what a what a brilliant fantasy box art. Look at just look at the colors on this. Amazing. Look at the reflection in Samus's visor. This this box art is absolutely terrific. The game is really good too. I really enjoy it. Um, I think this is, you know, I mean it's only the second game, but this is the first time Metroid was good in my opinion. I don't think the first game is very good. Uh, this certainly refined a lot of the aspects. Um, people don't really like the sort of like hunting down of the individual Metroids, which I understand, um, but uh, you know, maybe that's just something they did for the Game Boy version, but uh, still, a, a great game. Mortal Kombat, you know, I owned it as a kid. <laughs> Here it is. Uh, not, <laughs> this is, honestly, I don't like Mortal Kombat. I really don't like the early Mortal Kombat games. I never really did. It never got decent until at least three in my opinion. I think the first two were like, Ugh. especially the first one. Ugh. I have no idea how this series got popular. <laughs> the blood, I guess, the blood code. But um, you know, this is this is this is how I played it as a kid, and it's terrible. It's the worst way to play a game that I don't even like. But um, you know, certainly very nostalgic for me. Nemesis. Um, I think I got this at a flea market once and I was like, yeah, I could do a shoot 'em up on the Game Boy. So, certainly a, a nice addition to the library. A stack of games is getting a little precarious over there. All right, next stack. Um, Paperboy, also one of my first Game Boy games. My grandparents got me baseball and Paperboy for that Christmas, so I have four brand new Game Boy games the, game, the Christmas I got it. And this is a this is a real bitch to play on the Game Boy. Um, there's no color, so trying to like deliver papers is just is just a nightmare. And it's just, it feels like you don't have enough screen real estate to see where you're going. Um, man, I really wanted to like this game as a kid. It's tough. It's a tough game to play on the Game Boy for sure. Um, but uh, sort of prescient. My first job was a paperboy. Was a paperboy for a solid I don't know three years or so. So there's that. <laughs> Uh, 
Pokemon, red version. Uh, you know, sometimes I don't want to call myself a trendsetter. I don't set trends, but I do notice things before they become popular, I guess. Um, I don't necessarily make them popular myself, so I'm definitely not a trendsetter, but Pokemon is one of those things. I bought Pokemon Red version the day it came out. Um, I went to Toys R Us after school. They had to open the shipment box. Like, nobody no, nobody knew, knew what this was. Uh, they had to open the shipment box in the afternoon, you know? Like, that's unheard of now. Like, that wouldn't... <laughs> Absolutely would not have it now. Pokemon is now a juggernaut. Um, but, you know, I, I I saw this and I just thought, what a, what a, what a really cool concept, capturing monsters. And I love this old school, like, Pokemon art too, this sort of watercolory looking art. I love that. That's great. Uh, but I adored this game when it came out. I mean, it's really, like, I mean, it's really pushing the limits of the Game Boy. Like, it's slow and sluggish. I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's a bear to play now, but... Um, I, I, I was really enamored. I got sucked into this as a kid. The real Ghostbusters. Um, you know, I'm a big Ghostbusters fan, as you might catch on. And had to have this, but it's it doesn't... <laughs> it's nothing to do with Ghostbusters. Um, if you may be wondering, the real Ghostbusters was the name of the cartoon show when I was a kid, back in like the 80s and 90s. Had to be called that because there was another... Uh, someone, another company owned the rights to the name Ghostbusters and S Sony, Columbia, whoever licensed it for the movie but not for a cartoon. So for the cartoon they had, they, called, they, got, they got really snippy and called themselves the real Ghostbusters, which is something else. Um, but this game is just more of like a puzzle platformer. And in fact, the, the Ghostbusters name has so little to do with, <laughs> with the game is, is that uh, this game exists both in Europe and Japan uh, but does not have the Ghostbusters license. I think in one region it's Mickey Mouse, and I think in another region it's Bugs Bunny. So it's the same exact game, just different characters. That, that's how little Ghostbusters actually matters to this. Uh, but being a Ghostbusters fan, I had to have it. Skate or Die, Tour de Thrash. Um, a game I played as a kid and just absolutely love. I loved, you know, I, you know, I was a nerdy, like, you know, kid who stayed shut in and, like, read books and, like, drew in stuff. So like this just seemed like the coolest thing to me. This seemed like the height of cool, a skate or die, toward a thrash, and and it really is a great game. Like you know you can do you, there's a mode where you can do stunts on this ramp and earn points. You can earn so many points, and then you go to the moon and you can skate on the moon, um, <laughs> which is fun. But most of the races have like this behind the skater view, and you race forward and these in the, like this sort of like uh, half pipe and it you have to jump over obstacles and, and it curves and bends and the physics are really good for a game boy game they're very impressive uh and um you skate all over the world and uh it is uh it's 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 really cool the music's great great game i see on ebay it goes for it, it can go for hundreds of dollars which is uh, it feels fake to me. I don't know why this game is suddenly worth hundreds of dollars, but um, it's still a great game. Street Fighter 2 in this Player's Choice box, uh, which is low-key hideous. Not the worst Player's Choice box I've ever seen, but not great. Um, you know, I bought this for $10. I thought, why the heck not? Um, it's, it's, you know, like Mortal Kombat, this is not how you want to play Street Fighter. Um, but, you know, I love how they adapted the art. It looks really cool. You know, I like the box art. I like the old school Street Fighter 2 logo. There's a lot of nostalgia just sort of like in the art and iconography of this game. Uh, more than the, 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 the Game Boy game itself. Super Mario Land. Um, a bizarre Mario game. Um, I, I appreciate its uniqueness. Um, but not, not, not my favorite Mario, for sure. Um, Super Mario Land 2, six golden coins, brought it more in line with the console Mario. Still a very strange game, sort of plays by its own rules, but looks, well, what are these screenshots? I got washed out these are, what the crap? Um, but, uh, you know, a much more pleasant Mario experience. I really enjoy this. Mario Land 2 is great. Tiny Toon Adventures, Babs' is Big Break, uh, a game that I wanted as a kid but never got and bought as an adult because, you know, damn it, I can. <laughs> and uh, 
and you know it's a little platformer in the same vein as the NES version as well. Look how much text they put on the back of games back then. It's wild. Games now, it's like, game! <laughs> it's like three screenshots, and like, that's it. That's that's all you get. Because you already know what it is. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Fall of the Foot Clan. Amazing box art. This box art is not unique to this. I think this is... Uh, there were like posters and stuff with this art, but still, I love this art. The game itself... Um, is dead simple you walk to the right and you kill things i mean there is there is no nuance to this game like whatsoever and the graphics are very very basic as you can see here which makes the second game all the much more uh fascinating interesting enjoyable uh this is turtles 2 back from the sewers my box is very rough um it's very old um as you can see the graphics are much improved and the gameplay is much more engaging but you know at its core it's still you know walk to the right and kill things you know tried and true video game genre uh x <laughs> slowly what it's called it's x it looks like it's a whole bunch of japanese characters it literally just says x um and this is uh a, uh, a 3d game on the game boy um you know certainly certainly not an ideal game for the game boy but just really really fascinating that they pulled it off um i believe this was by the same studio that went on to do Star Fox, if i'm not mistaken um which is a really cool lineage and finally to wrap up this video we have yoshi which i got as a kid for a good report card um some might argue that why you know why did your parents punish you for getting a good report card um i like yoshi maybe it's just because that's what i had to play i didn't own a lot of games most of these games over here you know i owned i don't know somewhere between six and ten game boy games as a kid i didn't own a ton um this was one of them so you just make do with what you have and i like it i think it's a pretty good puzzle game i think it's uh, maligned a little too much but that's okay uh, i like you yoshi so that's my Game Boy collection. And, you know, it's quite small. There aren't too many more that I want, really a few. Um, I, lear I, I, I basically collect based on, largely on nostalgia, not on really on value or completeness or anything like that. It's mainly, you know, I wanted to make sure I had the games I had as a kid, which I do. I don't think I'm missing any. Um, no, that's not true. I'm missing a couple Power Rangers and I think Run and Stimpy Vidiots I still need to get off the top of my head. Um, but I have most of the games I had as a kid and then just a few more that I find, you know, like X that I find interesting or, you know, uh, games I wanted as a kid, like Tiny Toon Adventures, right? So my collecting is largely based around, uh, appealing to the child in me, I guess, for, for the Game Boy. And, um, that's all right by me. So, um, that's my Game Boy collection. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, feel free to let me know uh, what games you enjoy in this collection or what your favorite Game Boy games are. I want to thank you for watching, and until next time, you take it easy.